You hear me now? Perfect. Hi, good evening. <laughs> I'm old fashioned. <laughs> no problem on this. We can do it. <laughs> good. How are you doing? I'm good. And you? I'm very well, thank you. A bit of a serious topic. You were diagnosed with your lung cancer uh, last year. Then it was gone. Now it's back again. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. You know, I feel good. And um, I, I got to say that I feel better now than I did a year ago. And, uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. And of course, it's a serious diagnosis. And and the diagnosis I had around Easter this year uh, that it spread, uh, it spread from, it started with lung cancer and I went through a lot of uh, uh, radiation therapy and uh, chemotherapy. Then I went on immune therapy. And, uh, but it spread pretty fast to my bones. And, and that's where it's at. The last good news I had, I got to say that, you know, uh, is that, um, that it looks like that, that it's at ease, uh, you know, and, and that the immune therapy is having a good effect on me. So, um, so now I'm actually happier than I was like, say, nine years, nine months ago when I had the, the bad meshes that it spread, you know, but, uh, but I can't change the facts, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm, and I am like, I'm, uh, like, I'm, <laughs> like some of my lyrics proven on this new album that I am living in the now, you know, I am, but I'm, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good, you know, I'm feeling great, you know, I, I, like you said, like a year ago, I didn't know if I would experience another Christmas. But now I do believe in it. There's just like a week to it. I mean, so I'm good. Things are what they are. That's true. But I, I was pretty impressed because you were able to talk so openly from the very beginning to your fans about all this journey and this long thing you had to, to go through. How did you manage to, yeah, to be so open and transparent about it? Because I imagine it to be really hard for, for, for yourself to even <laughs> go through it. So. Well, it, it, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure I want to say that I wanted to be open about it, you know, but it's just the, the thing is that when all this happened, happened and I had the diagnosis in the, the beginning of September last year, and um, we were coming out with the brand new, Pretty Mates were coming out with a brand new album in November, uh, the Andres Your Madness album, and uh, everything was recorded, everything was ready to go. We had a gigs booked for December, a lot of Christmas gigs, and we had a, a full-scale European tour and some uh, um, some of these cruise gigs to the Caribbeans in January, February. And uh, the promoters of our, our agencies, I, then this happened, and I knew that, uh, that uh, they told me that I, we cannot... Uh, we try to remove everything, you know, with surgery, but uh, you have to go through chemotherapy and radiation as well, and uh, that was it. And so, the, uh, you know, the agency's promoters asked me to, uh, it would be nice with an official statement, mm -hmm. you know, for insurance uh, reasons, everything, you know, to the promoters. Yeah. So I just decided, so well, that's fair enough, you know, and I so, so I went public with it, and, and I went public, and I had so many, uh, so much love coming from fans and followers, and I just decided to be open about it since I broke the news. And I tried to be open about it ever since. And I have no problem talking about it. Uh, but uh, well, actually when I had the, 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 the last, the bad message in, in around Easter last year, I didn't go public with it because I wasn't ready to deal with it. Uh, no. I just did like a two month ago or something like that, you know? So people thought I was actually posted that I was now in remission and, it looked very good, everything, but unfortunately it did not. So only six weeks after mm -hmm. I had, uh, I was told that it, it spread and I had stage four cancer. Yeah. And uh, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the, the short answer of a long answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here we are, I'm still but, around. But what, what would you say is on the one hand, your biggest fear and in the on other hand, uh, maybe the hope you have? Well, I, I mean, the thing is, when you get cancer, uh, if you go and read the statistics about lung cancer spreading to the bones, it's much more fun to read like a Donald Duck magazine, you know, it's, it's not really comfortable reading, you know, but I think I've, I've learned to, I don't think, I don't know if you ever learned, but I've, 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 I'm dealing with it, I've, I've, um, I've learned to be in it, it, it's very hard for my wife and my kids as well, for my family, but uh, I'm trying to deal with it the best way I can and the best way I could deal with it 
was to focus on something else and try to put it aside. And um, um, yeah, I mean, just just try to focus on something else. And that's why I, I did this album. I mean, it was this was all very, very frustrating for me, of course, but it was also very frustrating for my band, Pretty Mates, yeah. because it was uh, our baby, the new album, the project, everything just fucked up because of me. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't help it anyway. But it was very frustrating for everyone involved and, to, and also financially in, in every sense of the word. But then on top came the whole Corona thing, which just fucked up things completely. Um, uh, but I mean, I, mean I, I couldn't do anything about it. So, so what I could do was to, to try to focus on something else, which I did. And, uh, and I set a goal, to, okay, let me do, well, that's, that's probably one of your next questions. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I had a goal, so let me do this album, you know, and, um, and I'm glad I did. It was some kind of a therapy for me yeah. to, to do something else. Like, I mean, I had two choices. I could sit, sit in the corner and, and accept the facts and tell myself, okay, the prospects are very bad, you're gonna die, you know. But I'm a believer, man, I, I have to believe, you know. I mean, if you read the statistics, it's like that there's like four or 5% chance that I'll be alive after five years. Uh, but there's still a hope, there's still a miracle. I'm not being naive, but I just gotta hope for the miracle, you know, because I still have things to accomplish. I still have things to give, so much left to give, you know. And, and I don't want to say, I'm not, a, I'm not, I won't say I'm scared of dying because I've, I've learned to live with it. The fact that I am gonna die, actually, we're all gonna die, right? I mean, we could hit by a, an asteroid tomorrow. Exactly. Civilization would die out. <laughs> But it's just like when you get a diagnosis like that, like cancer is a scary word. And it's just like, and it gets a little bit closer, right? But I'm still here, man. I'm still around and, and, and still want to get the best out of life. That's it, you got, you got to take it, um, you got to live in a house. I mean, I, I write about it in the lyrics from this new album that I've done. You, you got to live it day by day, you know, and, and, and take it as it comes. Because I can't change the facts, you know, it's just impossible. It is what it is. Just got to get the best out of it, you know. I might be run over by a truck tomorrow, anyway, you know. But that is that's how it is. But I'm that doesn't mean that I'm careless or anything. It's just the way. I don't have a choice. Yeah. I just I got I, I got to get the best out of life, you know. I and listen, if I'm gonna go, man, if I'm gonna go, like man, I say man, woman, <laughs> if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna go in, in in three months from now, six months from now, I had a great life. I had so much fun, and if if my kids just have half the fun of what I had, they should be happy, because I. But that doesn't mean I want to say goodbye to my loved ones, you know, who wants to. But uh, I had a great life, but I'm still ready to give, man. I still got a lot I want to do. You're here, you're looking great. You just had dinner with your wife. And I think you look great too. couldn't be better. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't be better. So yeah, let's leave aside the bad topic. Um, You'll be releasing One Shot on March 21st. I had the joy to already listen to it. It's really great. So, um, what would you say is the main tenor or main idea of the record? The main ideal of the record is that I didn't actually have any plans to do a solo album. You know, mm -hmm. but for a lot of reasons, uh, various reasons, and in particular my health issues, uh, and the fact that uh, we, the whole world was on a lockdown and there was no, not going to be any gigs anyway coming up. Mm -hmm. I just decided to, and I, I said, when I, when I had this uh, bad message in the Easter lab, the cancer spread and, and the stage four diagnosis, um, I was in panic for a while. And I, I spoke to my good friend and guitarist and keyboard player and pretty mates, Chris Laney, which I regularly spoke to. I said, I've got all these songs, man. I'm not ready to go. Because when I had that message, I really thought that, okay, maybe I have three months, six months left. Uh, that's how I thought. Uh, and that's why some of the lyrics of this album, that was, a lot of them was written in that period of time, pretty much reflects how I was, uh, how my state of, state of mind was, you know. Um, so we just said, well, it hit me, man. I'll send the ideas and, uh, and I've been writing a lot of stuff um, during my, the, the period from, I would say like October, 2019, when I, when I started, went to all the treatments, I, I, my way out was writing music. And, and I had a lot of ideas on my iPhone for the last couple of years or whatever, you know. Uh, and all in all, it, when it all summed up, I said, yeah, I got an album's worth of material, you know, and said, well, it hit me, send it to me. 
And I started going into it in detail, organizing the songs, saying, well, this, this bridge part would fit to this verse. And, and I wrote a lot of new stuff as well. Uh, and I bought a piano for the first time. I hadn't, didn't play, I play, used to play a little keyboard when I had a little studio down in my basement. I didn't do that for years. For years, I wrote songs on guitars. And I, and, and, and I bought this uh, piano, which I wrote some of the, quite a few of the songs on this album, actually, and particularly the ballad kind of songs. And it just inspires you differently. Well, anyway, but that, that was the main ordeal for, for, for doing this was to, you know, to, to record, to get rid of, get some of the music I already had written and the music I was writing at the time being uh, out of my system. And that's when Chris Laney was a huge help, you know, cause I, and, and it was so, I was so much in panic and, and so bad mentally at the time being that what I said, let's wait, you, I sent you the ideas with a Mellotron, so you had the click track and stuff. And, and like, like four or five hours, I had like the instrumentation back from him because he's a genius at working on <laughs> Pro Tools and stuff like that. So programmed drums and everything. So what we did was actually, I got it and the song was there and, and, um, and uh, I went over to, uh, I, I did the vocals, I recorded the vocals and then when I recorded all the vocals for this album, which was mainly done like between May and August or something, so August, September, and we started doing the whole instrumentation for the album. You know? So it was done totally opposite that you would normally do, because normally I would say, I'm the last one to do my recordings. <laughs> all the music is played, right? Okay. The last thing normally being done is the guitar solos and the vocals. And so this way, this was so awkward doing this, and it was all done mp3 files forth and back so it was a totally game changer for me but the message i had around easter was a game changer anyway and that's why i did it and um that was the goal i said i said um you got i gotta set a goal for myself i can't sit down and wait to die which i wouldn't do anyway but i mean i set a goal i want to do a new album i want i want to do my my own stuff and i did for various reasons because i mean there was nothing in the cards. We couldn't do anything at the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just very happy I, I achieved that goal. So now I've got to set another goal for myself. That's great. I'm yeah. curious to see what that might be. And that goal is that I might as well do another round, you know. I got the song for it and I'm already writing on it. And, and, I, and I have another wish. Really, I have another wish because I'm not saying I'm, I'm not going to go. I don't know where I'm going to go. You know, the thing is, you live in intervals of three months. You know, every third month I'm going to a scan, and you never know what you're getting told. So, so it's very, very difficult and very hard to plan. Whether it comes to me, or it comes to Pretty Maze, or whatever it comes to, mm. or Avantasia, you know. So you do the gigs. I'd love to do the gigs, you know. But uh, I don't know what the doctor's going to tell me in February when I'm going to the next scan. You know, mm. that is my life. That that's how it is. But then again, you can't sit around and just wait for bad news. So you just got to move yeah. on. Go ahead, and that's what I do. So I have a big dream to do, to get back on stage, you know, get back to do what I love the most. I mean, there's three things in life I love to do the most. That is to create music, to sing it, and to perform it live. But I hate doing shooting videos, photo sessions, and doing Zoom interviews. <laughs> no, I was kidding, I was kidding. Well, different times, you know. <laughs> times you know and I, I actually have some pretty big challenges this time because i was supposed to go to um, go to stockholm and shoot some videos because we're as well all the great musicians that not all of them but some of them are living here in denmark but great the musicians i work with on this album is from stockholm i wanted to go there and shoot the videos but i can't i mean i can't go anywhere for various reasons because of the lockdown first of all but also if i want to go somewhere i got to contact my my um contact my uh, insurance company and the SOS Denmark to get a permission because I have cancer. Really? For insurance reasons, you know, so I can't just go. It all depends. They go in and then they contact the oncologist and say, okay, so what is the status and that kind of stuff. So that just makes things very complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll get past that. Well, well, we'll fix it somehow, you know, but, but everything is a challenge these days. Yeah, that's true. Out of the new record, I mean, I know and I can imagine that every song means means a lot to you, but if you had to pick one special song, which would be the most meaningful for you and why? Well, there's a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I seriously think it's uh, 
the thing is, when I started writing these songs, these songs could, uh, I mean, the songs are either written on a piano or an acoustic guitar. And when you get put three or four chords together and you got, most of my songs starts with a melody, right? That's always the way I've been writing. And if it sounds good on the acoustic guitar or on a piano, you know, you have a good song. Then it's a matter of how do you, how do you want to produce, what do you, what do you want to, what, what's the package going to be? What do you want to produce it into? And to begin with, it could have been acoustic, um, I had a uh, request for, for doing a solo album before in my career. And I think people were thinking, well, do something else, you know. But at the end of the day, I decided to, to go for, um, for something that was kind of suitable or that people, the, the people, the fans that followed me through all these years, whether I was doing Pretty Mates, Nordic Union or whatever, whatever you know, that's something they could relate to. And that's what I did. But the challenge was uh, lyrically, I mean, lyrically it was a challenge because I was in a different place that I normally was. You can't write about, I found it difficult to write about Dungeons and Dragons, mm. like rock and, rock and roll naturally. I never really did anyway. But uh, especially the first couple of songs I did, I was, I, I just couldn't get the focus from what was going on in my life. And uh, that's, that's why a couple of the songs in the album, quite a lot of them, well, at least half of the album is about, uh, my situation at the given time when I wrote the lyrics and um, I just couldn't get away from that. At the end of the day, I said to myself, Man, I, I, can't, I can't just write ballads. I can't, uh, I can't just write about my situation and living in the now. I got to write about something else. So I, I had to find some topics to write, but it was just very, it's, it's, the, it's the most difficult lyrics I have ever written in my life, but also it's the most personal lyrics I've ever written in my life. And I forgot to choose one favorite track, which I don't, not just lyrically, but musically, which I think is one of the best songs I've ever written. It's the title track, One Shot, which I think is, uh, it means a lot to me, but it's it's very much how, it's it's about, well, if you pretend me sitting with the love of my life and thinking this is the last minutes we have, you know, let's enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's, one shot is about it. One shot doesn't necessarily mean that this is my only shot at doing a solo album, but it means that we literally do have one shot at life on this earth. Mm -hmm. Whatever you believe in, you know, this may just be a stepping stone to the main prize where we are right now, you know. I hope, I mean, that's what I hope for. I mean, because we're all going to go at some point, and maybe we live internally, spiritually. But uh, I had a lot of. Um, I've been thinking a lot of thoughts that I never thought I would. I've always been spiritual. I remember when we toured with Aventasia, when I, when Michael Kiske and me, when he was in Aventasia, when he toured with Aventasia, and I still, he still sends me stuff and we uh, write together and talk. Uh, he's a great companion for me. And he's been there spiritually for me because he's a very spiritual person. And I've just been thinking thoughts and things that, uh, I, I, I didn't care much about before because I don't think I don't take things for granted anymore. Mm -hmm. You 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 got you got to adapt to the to, to the particular situation you're in. Therefore, this the whole thing has been a totally game changer for me. So, so it's it's been very very different. I, I know I got a, far away from the question you asked me. No, actually, you picked up my next question as well, which I'm very happy about because I wanted to know from you which uh, was the story behind the lyrics of One Shot which is now perfectly answered. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's sometimes lyrics are, are difficult to explain, but it's just like being yeah. in the moment, we only have this chance right here and now. Forget about all the trouble, let's enjoy the moment. And that's what it's all about. It sounds very uh, romantic, whatever, you know, but, it, but, it, but the, the lyric, I can't explain why, but when I read that lyric, it is so true. But it's always, um, it's always, um, so it's real, which is the first single, which where I'm just mainly reflecting. Mm. Um, well, there's a couple of songs. I think a couple of the songs is all about it. There's actually a song that never made it to the album. That was actually the first song okay. for, for the album, which called Carry Me Over. Mm -hmm. It was kind of an acoustic, but it was simply too sad to put on the album because that that's how I felt just, I wrote that just the diagnosis kind of or around the same time. But that might be, uh, come out at some later point. I don't know. I'm I curious to hear that one too. Yeah. I guess you can release the second one. 
yeah, that'll be a second one or some other stuff, whatever. That's great. And you also have a song called uh, Subjugated, in okay. which you state that you don't want to be intimidated. To whom is this dedicated to or to what? Well, this, it, it's, it's just a song about narcissism. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a song about, because I had, it, it came, the lyrics came from, from uh, I, I was talking to a, um, the daughter of the woman that used to live on the other side of the street one day. That, that's actually what inspired me to do it. it could, I, I think we all know, we all can relate to it because I think everybody come across a narcissist or two in their life. I mean, the, the, the leader of the so-called democratic world <laughs> is one, right? Well, well, yeah. So, so whether it's particularly dedicated to anybody, anybody special, I wrote it on, the, on a, then I realized I knew a narcissist myself or two. Mm -hmm. So that's what the lyrics about and no one particularly. And I loved also Miles Away and um, it's a beautiful love song. And uh, I wanted to know, how did your wife like it? Um, I've written songs to my wife before that, but that is definitely totally dedicated to my wife because uh, we've had our ups and downs in life. And, um, you know, sometimes life is greener on the other side. Uh, but at the end of the day, she's been there for me. She's been rock solid through all this, which I realized. And whatever problems we had in the past or whatever, I mean, she gave me the opportunity to, you know, to be the clown the vodka clown around the world to enjoy and she took care of the kids i took care of the kids too when i home because i had a lot of free time when i was not touring but she was just a woman she's been there for me all the time and that is a very uh, that lyric in particular is very much from the heart for me um, and i guess it, it's pretty obvious to everybody but and i love the song it's, how long have you been married to her now uh, 75 years I <laughs> at least <laughs> no we've been married actually for we've been married for 29 years wow it's a long time it's a long time <laughs> and how would you your perfect world look like uh in which you'd like to picture yourself regarding to the song picture yourself uh, picture yourself picture yourself that was written about it you know it's it's very it was written Uh, at the time, there was all the racial conflict going on in America, in particularly in, in, in April, just around the time I had these bad news. But I mean, I couldn't write about myself all the time. So that could have been, that was the lyrics I could have written like uh, years ago anyway. I always read, wrote lyrics about topics, you know, concerning, concerning all of us yeah. or what, what, about what was going on in the world. So Picture Yourself is um, it's just about, it's about climate change, it's about Because it's about human beings who treat each other respectfully, and it, and not not only human beings should, but human beings should treat should treat beings respectfully. Because mm -hmm. if we treated animals the way we should, or you know, I saw some programs about, about these wet markets in in East Asia where they say that this uh, coronavirus come from. You don't fucking treat animals like that. And we treat animals disrespectfully. We treat nature. I mean, we were all given this plant from somewhere, but not to treat it the way we do. Yeah. And I'm not trying to sound like a saint here or like I have a thing of No, but it's true. But, but I, I, I seriously do not, and it's not a cons conspiracy theory that, but I, I, I somehow just believe that this is the way that nature says, thank you for nothing now yeah. get this yeah. take yeah. this you know because we fucking spoil the planet that we were given to little and see how things actually changed since the start of the pandemic i mean i know it's it's yeah. kind of weird to think about it but we all travel less <laughs> the, the air is getting better and all these things which which really suck for us but for the environment in the end it's it's a good thing the thing is the thing is that that, that that's a fact now What is very interesting is that when, when all this is over, when the vaccine is uh, getting implemented mm -hmm. to uh, the people, and have we learned anything? I don't think so. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure we have. But I hope so. I hope so. Um, anyway, let me put it this way: I've learned from my illness, from getting can cancer, 
And I should appreciate just the little things a bit more than I used to, you know, and don't take things for granted. I hope that human in general, from this world crisis we've been in and the lot, everything that is going on, you know, I just hope we all learn a little bit from it. You know? And um, what's the story behind One by One, which I also really liked? I oh, know you're fucking, oh, you're challenging me. What does that look <laughs> like? It's also a little about, I mean, I, I seriously, I haven't heard the song for, for a while. <laughs> um, I think it's about, as, as far as I remember it, it's, you know, it's a little bit about the, what we just talked about, mm. you know? And it's also about illness, about that don't take things for granted, you know? Like one by one, the, the, the road will soon enough be closing in, you know? And, and also it's a little bit about even though you're told that that you you have a problem, sir, you know, you rise and stand tall. You you gotta you gotta believe in yourself and get up again. And um, I wish I had the lyrics right in front of me. <laughs> so yeah, after one shot, which is I would say my favorite uh, track of the record, I really enjoyed when dreams are not enough which is the last song of the record. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about that one. Well, it's, it's about uh, uh, it, that, that. That's not about the issues we just talked about. That's basically about uh, that sometimes you go in life, that there, there are things that you want so much, but whatever you do, this is written about the man on the street, you know, the man that maybe do not make his dreams come true, mm -hmm. keep struggling on, on through life and Whatever you do is just a setback, you know. Listen, it's really difficult for me, and I've said that a million times when I've done interviews. Sometimes it's really hard for me to explain a lyric. All I can say is that the lyric is honest, and it meant something in the minute I wrote it. You know what I'm saying? That's enough. I have the lyric in front of me, because I, I don't remember them all word by word, but, sure. but, but every, every lyric on this album was 100% uh, honest. When I, when at, at the moment I did it, it came from the heart, that's for sure, absolutely. And it always did, not just on this album, but whatever lyrics I wrote before, you know, always meant something special. That's great. Or well, had a meaning when I did it, you know. Maybe when I listen to it afterwards, it doesn't mean shit, but... but it, <laughs> <I wrote>. <laughs> <laughs> that very moment it did, and that's the most important thing. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. So, Ronnie, we came to the last um, two questions of... Uh, this interview and these are two questions which I like to ask everyone I do an interview with so my first one would be if you should convince a young person to listen to rock music which song would you show him or her and why oh, that, that's an impossible that's the impossible question right? <laughs> that's it is. Um, I mean I, I couldn't possibly pinpoint one track um, I mean, just one song. One song, yeah. the song. Well, and you're talking rock and roll, or you're talking heavy metal, or what are you talking? Whatever you wish. I think one of the one of my well, there's so many good songs. I, I, there's so many songs I love. You know, um, if I was going to take, no, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. All right. If there's one song I remember from the first time I heard it on the radio that made a change, I would. And only 10 years old, you know, 10 years old I was, yeah. I was Bohemian Rhapsody because it was so different. It was so different because yeah. it had everything. It had everything I love about music. It had a uh, great melody, great lyrics. It had drama and it had the heavy metal part in it too. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I could probably think about Stay Away to Heaven. I could say Day of My Life by the Beatles. I could say a lot of songs, but. I could say Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. I could say, but Bohemian Rhapsody is probably, it's just when you ask me, I'm, I'm thinking about what song that actually made a change for me the first time I heard it on the radio. And that was a little transistor radio back in, uh, cause that's all we had mm. back in, uh, I don't know, April, March, April 75. Here we are with the years, right? <laughs> uh, something like that, but there's so much music. I love, I'm, I'm, I'm very wide open when it comes to music. I love so many kinds of music. Basically, I'm a, I'm just a big pop fan. I'm just, a, I'm just a big fan of the great melody. That's what I love, and that's why, yeah, well, of course, Freddie Mercury is uh, eternally uh, one of my heroes. Yeah, 
And um, if you could have a fantasy dinner with three people of your choice, it doesn't matter if alive or dead or fantasy, who would sit at your table? Who would you invite? <laughs> Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I could guess that one. <laughs> um, uh, oh, probably, uh, well, Freddie Mercury. Now I'm just mentioning some of the, it could be John Lennon, Paul McCartney. I would never be able to choose between the two of them. And Barry Gibb. Because I'm saying Barry Gibb because Bee Gees, uh, everything they've done from, because I grew up with the Bee Gees and you know, from a songwriter's point of view, melodically, uh, it's one of my biggest uh, influences, actually. Uh, cool. And that goes from all the way in the 60s up till the last album they did in 2001. I'm a, I'm a huge Bee Gees fan, you know. Cool. And I'm a huge fan of ABBA as well. And mm. the Wheels. And I'm a huge fan of Black Sabbath, uh, Def Leppard, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, whatever, you know. And even new bands like uh, Bajira, uh, you know, stuff like that. I listen to all kinds of stuff. I mean, I can listen to Dancing Queen, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I start off in the gym, you know, and I end up listening to Silvira by George, you know, <laughs> you know, like that, you know or Pantera, whatever, you know I mean? What a playlist. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, you should see my playlist one day, man. It, it, woman, sorry. It is, uh, I'm very, I'm so, it, it depends very much on, on, on what kind of mood I'm in. Um, but, but the key word is, Either a great riff, the energy, uh, the output, and always, normally, I'll always go for a great melody. Mm. Makes sense. <laughs> Ronnie, thank you very, very much for your yeah, time. But seriously, yeah, to all the fans of uh, Hardline Magazine, thank you very much for the support throughout the years. And I hope that um, you did my new album, One Shot. Um, it's not a uh, riff oriented heavy metal album but it's got some great songs on it and I hope you dig it and thank Next you one. nice talking to you it was great talking to you thank nice you for you. your time thank you very much Merry Christmas to you and post thank you cheers one last time <laughs> okay bye 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 <laughs>